Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be my next recent reads wrap up where I talk about 10 books that I've read recently. <laughs> this particular chunk of books was very positive overall, I'd say. There were a, a good number of five stars, so I'm very excited about that. Like always, we'll start from the lowest rated and work our way up to the highest rated. The first book I'll talk about was Roar by Cora Carmack, and I rated this three stars. So this is a YA fantasy where our main character, Aurora, or Roar, is a princess, but in this world, people are able, to, mostly the nobles are able to harness uh, storm magic, and they basically like capture the heart of storms and can use that to do things. <laughs> um, however, uh, Roar doesn't really have this storm magic. Uh, she essentially must marry this other stormling prince in order to keep her kingdom, I guess, and protect her people. Uh, however, she finds things out about this prince that she's supposed to marry and gets a bit worried. So she ends up finding this storm hunter who wasn't born with this storm magic, but he has it still. So she's like, oh, well, there's clearly this other option for me. She might not have magic now, but she can steal it if she's brave enough. So I really liked this idea overall. I thought this was super cool. Um, I just like the concept of different storm magic um, and just like how storms can have different personalities. Really fun to see all these different types, like uh, like fog has a different personality than uh, like tornadoes and things like that. Uh, generally speaking, I thought this was a really interesting world, and I did enjoy where the story went in terms of Roar herself. However, I found Roar to be a little bit irritating. I like, I guess I would have preferred seeing her kind of like scheming more in terms of like having to marry this prince instead of just like running away but you know I get that I guess in terms of the story and her her own character development she did need to have I guess this space from running away to uh, kind of come into her own but I don't know I guess I would have preferred her standing up for herself a bit more I did think that there was like generally a fun cast of side characters However, I didn't really love the romance all that much. Basically, what made me a little bit uncomfortable was that the love interest kept comparing Roar to his little sister, and I was like, um, I feel like I don't love how you have romantic feelings for somebody you keep saying, like, oh, you remind me of my sister. I don't know, so that was a little, little odd. I enjoyed this, but I feel like it didn't quite live up to its full potential for me, and I don't really feel the need to keep going in the series. The next three-star book that I'll talk about is Of Blood and Bone by Nora Roberts, and so this is the second book in the Chronicles of the One trilogy. The One, I read it, I don't know, a few years ago, I think, and really enjoyed it. It's kind of like a, basically, like, I seem to remember a plague kills a whole bunch of people, and uh, people end up the people who survive end up developing various magical powers. So now, in this particular book, we follow Fallon, who is the chosen one, and she turns 13 and has to train with a mentor for two years um, to, ver to understand the various types of magic, as well as like different people and beings. So that's essentially all this book is. It is basically just a very long, drawn out training montage. And like, <laughs> you know, I do enjoy those types of books, but this was like 450 pages of just like training and not a lot of conflict. So I was like, mm, this could have been better for me. Uh, Fallon was remarkably well adjusted for a teenager and she like, there's obviously very much this chosen one trope and she is kind of overpowered and like, it's honestly a little ridiculous just how easy, it, how easily she's able to learn the different types of magic and like gain these magical companions. So basically I feel like this could have been shorter. There was like I guess a bit of this storyline with, with um, I think they're called the purity warriors. They're basically trying to kill all magical beings. So there was like a bit of conflict with that but overall it was just like a bunch of training and I don't, it, I don't know. I wasn't like super motivated with it, so I felt like it was not nearly as good as book one. Um, I'm not particularly excited about continuing, but I do have the third book, so I, I'll finish it up. You know, now that Fallon has all these magical powers, I guess it will be nice to see what she actually does with them. So yeah, overall, this was a pretty disappointing sequel for me. So now we move into the three and a half star rating, and the first book I'll talk about here is The Dark That Dwells by Matt Digman and Ryan Roddy. So the author sent 
this to me for review and it comes out uh, I can't remember exactly when it's sometime in early July I believe I think I want to say July 10th I could be wrong about that but I think that's what that's about right um, but this is basically a sci-fi book with fantasy elements so I did kind of do a buddy read of this with Nikki from I Read Past My Bedtime and Scott from Book In Invasion, though we're all kind of like on our own pace and I think I finished it the earliest. Humanity has been like raised from ruin by the only god they remember. Humanity is trying to expand across the galaxy and, and learn things that they've perhaps forgotten. However, an evil still slumbers as well. So we follow four main characters. There's like a mercenary and his shape-shifting partner, a soldier, a zealot, with an infamous ship. The zealot is hunting this woman who has like arcane powers of fire and lightning and she's searching for this knowledge in order to save her people. So along the way their paths intertwine. Um, so this I think was not what I expected but it was still really enjoyable. I thought that they would all band together in order to fight this like ancient evil but that wasn't quite what it turned out to be and that's totally fine. But, so while I don't know if I ever fully connected with any of the characters to say that like one is my particular favorite, I did think that this was an interesting variety of people. The zealot um, was possibly the most interesting of the characters and he's definitely rather alarming <laughs> and scary. I felt like no one was entirely good or evil so we have a lot of kind of like morally gray characters and even the people who are supposed to be evil like this zealot kind of, I could definitely understand like his motivations and reasoning behind all of his actions. Um, and like even the people who are supposed to be good are <laughs> definitely make some questionable decisions and I was like I don't know if I fully agree with this. So I thought that that provided like I don't know an interesting variety of characters and I feel like it makes the characters more relatable because no one is truly good or truly evil. I will say I did get confused at times with some of the side characters, um, especially when they join different groups than the groups that they originally started in. I like, I don't know, had a little bit of a hard time tr keeping track of everybody. The fantasy aspects that come up in here are really cool and I thought this idea was super interesting. Once we're kind of introduced to this, it, it definitely took a bit of a turn and I was like, oh, okay, like this is really intriguing. Uh, it's a fun blend of fantasy and sci-fi. In terms of these arcane powers, I didn't fully understand them, but they were really cool. It's definitely a very action-packed story and pretty fast-paced overall. There were areas where I think the plot, I guess, kind of slowed down a little bit for me, but like as a whole, I would say it is very action-packed. This is always really cool in books where you like come across scenes where you know like the title is mentioned and this particular one when we like find out where the title comes from it was just like oh shit this is awesome like honestly pretty ominous but also really cool so I definitely liked that a lot. Uh, overall this was very enjoyable and I think it has a lot to offer for readers of sci-fi and fantasy. The other three and a half star book I'll talk about is Total A Spy's Guide by Tamara Pierce and this is supposedly compiled by George Cooper who is the spy master of Total. This was the first book I had read that counted towards my Read the Olympics 2020 readathon. Um, I'm not completely sure what I'm going to count it for. I think I'm going to do hard mode for my readathon where uh, each book will only count for one prompt so I'm like making this <laughs> harder for myself so I'm not completely certain what I'm going to count this for. I'm inclined to count it for um, I think it's judo because this is you know a spies guide and that that prompt deals with spies but anyway so this is essentially just like a just like background info for Tortal and I would say it's really only for readers who have already read the books in this world. It was essentially just like a really fun supplement to things that I already know. Uh, we have letters from you know the spy master we have some profiles of various people in the world um, we do get like a little bit of hints of continuing the story with some like strange things happening but generally speaking it's like you know teaching materials guides to creatures family papers like di diplomatic things i guess so this <laughs> was just like a fun nostalgic return to tortal i think you know, it's hard for me to exactly remember, but I definitely think that Tamara Pierce's books were among the first books that I, where I really started to get into fantasy. So it's just like, it holds a very special place in my heart. In the back of the book, there's like a timeline and like summary of all the books. So like a lot of it, 
I haven't read some of these in quite some time, so it was, it was nice to kind of re revisit that. And um, evidently, I had like completely forgotten about this, but in the, um, I think it's the Immortals Quartet, evidently the main character in there, somehow there is like an involvement of the Kraken. And I was like, I didn't remember any of that. So now I'm like, did my love of the Kraken start even earlier than I thought? So I don't know, that was really fun. But generally, yeah, like, this is not necessary reading, but if you want to just like revisit the world of Portal, I think that this is a really fun companion book. So now we move into the four star range. And the first book I'll talk about here is The Matchmaker's List by Sonia Lali. So this is kind of like a rom-com, I guess. Um, so maybe also contemporary, I don't know. Our main character, Raina, lets her grandmother play a matchmaker for her. And she essentially gets overwhelmed by her grandma's list of bachelors for her to try to date. So she has to balance kind of this like, expectations of this arranged marriage with what she wants in life and like she doesn't want to hurt her grandma or anything like that certainly um so this was pretty enjoyable overall i it did remind me some of the themes that are touched on in uh, the netflix show never have i ever and which was like really funny by the way i definitely enjoyed that um i think mindy kaling created it possibly i'm not exactly sure She's somehow in charge of in charge of that show. But anyway, I think there's a lot of similar themes with um, talking about like not feeling truly immersed in Indian culture and heritage and kind of balancing like family obligations and duty and like this expectation of arranged marriage with like, I don't know, what what our characters like actually want in life. <laughs> the blind dates themselves were pretty entertaining, though like overall in terms of the actual romance that ensues, I'm not sure I fully believed it, but it was still enjoyable for the most part. Reyna's grandma is probably my favorite character. She's just like very understanding and like, I don't know, she's just so supportive and I love seeing that. And I love seeing this relationship between Reyna and her grandma. Reyna's upbringing was not ideal. Her mom is pretty much absent, uh, so. I don't know, I feel like it, it brought Reyna and her grandma much closer together. In terms of Reyna herself, I think I thought she was generally likable. She works as an investment analyst, so I definitely enjoyed this more like mathy background. <laughs> However, she is kind of a coward at times and lets, and I did get a little bit frustrated that she lets certain things go as far as they did. Ultimately, I did like how everything turned out in this story. Uh, again, I think it's a really nice exploration of Indian culture and traditions. This takes place, I think, somewhere in Canada. So I do think it kind of explores, like, not feeling Indian enough. So that was just really interesting to get that point of view. I guess I would say there are some content warnings for unhealthy relationships in general. However, I definitely enjoyed this and would certainly recommend it if, if that plot sounds interesting to you. The other four star book I'll talk about is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. So this is a, a thriller and I don't want to say too much about it to not spoil things since it is a thriller, but this is essentially um, exploring the complexities of marriage and truths we ignore for love. It's like the, I guess, synopsis or whatever. It's like you may have assumptions of reading a book about an ex-wife who's obsessed with her new replacement. We'll just leave it at that. I've been feeling in a bit of a reading slump, so I do think that this helps me a lot just because I essentially like, I think I read a little bit, bit of it in like the previous day, but I essentially read most of this in one sitting, so I thought that was that felt nice to kind of like get this return to reading normally for me. I was surprised by some things that happened in here and I just like really wanted to keep going to figure out what was going on. I liked Vanessa for the most part, though I will say like thrillers that have some sort of tr this like trope, I guess, um, it's mostly in domestic thrillers that where like the main character has some sort of drinking problem or like drug abuse problem. That's not my favorite, but I think this wasn't as bad as some others that use that trope that I've read. Generally, I don't, again, don't want to say too much about it. Uh, I really had a great time with this. Um, it's very fast paced. The characters like 
are not all likable, but I can certainly understand some motivations behind certain actions. But yeah, so it's like a very easy, quick to read book. I would definitely recommend it if you are in the mood for a very fast paced thriller. So now we move into the five star range. And the first book I'll talk about here is The Unkindness of Magicians by Kat Howard. So this is an urban fantasy book where we're in New York City and there's this unseen world of magicians. And it, this unseen world kind of keeps to itself. About every 20 years, there's this turning where these magical houses have to choose a champion and duel for control over the unseen world. Um, however, this time we have an early turning. So we have Ian, who is the heir to a powerful house, who chooses to be a champion of a rival house. And then we have Sydney, who is our main character, and she's kind of this outsider, and she is hired by this candidate house, so a house trying to, like, form itself, essentially. So she is a formidable duelist, and she is seeking revenge. So this was fantastic. Um, there's certainly a lot going on here. We have a serial killer plot. We have, like, this exploration of the price of magic. And some characters are trying to reform the unseen world. Um, obviously, we have these duels. There's political schemes. So there's a lot going on, but I never thought that it felt like too much going on. Like I was very easily able to keep track of all these different plot threads and I think that they all work together in a very nice way to kind of explore, I guess, this generally like the darker side of magic. This all kind of works together to show that like even though people who are in power come like kind of think of themselves as being really noble and you know are kind of full of themselves like Mm, they're uh, they're not always as good as they think they are. <laughs> so that's all we'll say about that. Um, I really liked Sydney. She is trying to, uh, she's kind of fighting to get out of um, a not so great situation and she really wants to change things in this world. She's very powerful and she's very intelligent. I had a really fun time seeing her use her intellect and I kind of interpret the prompts in these duels in a really interesting manner. There's certainly a lot of uh, shitbag characters, <laughs> that's literally what I wrote, um, where, yeah, it's, again, more of these like very powerful people who have not the best ethics. <laughs> One of the other side characters, Harper, is trying to get revenge for the murder of her best friend, and I thought um, generally speaking, a lot of those side characters, especially those that deal with Sydney's particular plotline, I liked them quite a bit. Um, and like, I think his name is Laurent, uh, the guy who hires Sydney to be the duelist for his uh, candidate house. He is trying to become the first black head of a house, so that was really cool as well. And I thought he was a pretty nice character. We don't get to see him all that much, but the parts that we do see, like, I think he demonstrates like how much better he is than some of the current heads of houses. It was really nice seeing all the dynamics between all of these different characters, um, and I very much enjoyed this exploration of the darker side of magic and like the cost that is associated with using magic in this world. It is certainly a more grim side to things than what I think you usually see, so I don't know. This was, this was great. Um, I'm very excited. I think there's supposed to be a sequel to this that further explores Sydney's story that I think is supposed to come out later this year. Um, so I am definitely ready for that. The next five star book I'll talk about is The Emperor's Blaze by Brian Stavely. So I did a buddy read of this with Mahalia from Nerd It This Way. And so we had tried to do a buddy read of Legacy of Ash. I guess that was last month. I don't know what time it is, but like that was. I think we all remember my thoughts on Legacy of Ash and how that put me into a reading slump. Thankfully, this was so much better. Uh, this is a high fantasy, and this is the first book in the series. Uh, we essentially follow three siblings in this world. Well, I guess that's not technically true. We mostly follow two siblings, and the third sibling, I think, gets her story gets more explored in later books. But anyway, the heir to the Empire is at this monastery and he is learning kind of these mental techniques and things from the monks. And then we have the younger brother who is training to be a Ketrel, so this is kind of like this elite fighting force that's made up of giant birds, you have flyers, you have like demolitions people, and just generally like elite fighters. And then the third sibling is this sister, and she is 
Um, I think the minister, and she's much more involved in the politics of the throne. However, again, we don't, we spend like, I don't know, three or four chapters maybe with her. It's not a whole lot. So I don't have the best sense of her. But the emperor is murdered and there is a conspiracy afoot. This was fantastic. There's definitely, again, a lot of focus on um, both Valen and Caden's training in their various locations. But again, this is the type of setting that I really enjoy. And for me, like, I know I was literally just talking about like of blood and bone, how I didn't enjoy all that training montage essentially in this book there was so much more intrigue and actual conflicts and just like moments where i felt afraid for our characters so in this particular context this worked so much better for me i think generally speaking it's a very rich world with a lot of variety of people uh, these monks are very interesting there's they have like different mental techniques in order to kind of understand and perceive the world so it was cool to follow Caden as he learns sort of these different techniques and like some of his training is a little bit intense. <laughs> these Ketrel group of people are really cool. Uh, the training that they have to go through is also very intense and there was some, there were like probably some of the most intense scenes happened around this particular group of people and like oh my god some of these trials that they do it was like <gasps> so it was a lot there's some variety of magic in this world there's like these people called leeches and they have different wells that they can harness i guess to use their powers so that wasn't fully explored i think but it's the like the bits that we get are really neat and I definitely want to learn more about them. I loved all of this like political intrigue and scheming. Uh, the characters are obviously like trying to investigate things, especially like this murder of the Emperor and they're also trying to survive and oh, it's just so good. It works so well. The side characters are all excellent. Uh, I would say mostly I, I did prefer I think the side characters around Valen, like his group of, of friends I guess and like his his teammates in his general group in this like Ketrel force, whatever. I can't remember the exact term. Um, you know, we have again, like this demolitions expert who is this like kind of no nonsense girl who likes to blow shit up. So that was awesome. And then like Caden's monk teacher certainly has secrets that I want to know more about. There's another side character who's from this like Skull Sworn, which are I think kind of like assassins and they worship the God of the Dead. So. I really want to know more about them and I think this particular character there's like a, a standalone prequel type book that explores more of her background so I definitely want to read that and, and learn more about her because that seems really interesting. The plot was obviously like very gripping. I mentioned these like super intense scenes and I just like had to just keep reading. I needed to know what happened. Obviously I really love this world. I definitely want to continue it. I'm, I'm glad like I was a little nervous going into it. Um, just because like, I feel like I've been turned by some high fantasy lately, but this was just so great and I definitely recommend it. The next five out of five star book I'll talk about is Crush the King by Jennifer Eastip. So this is the third book in the Crown of Shards trilogy and I've talked about this before on my channel. I just love this trilogy so much. This is just like a fabulous fantasy romance series with gladiators and just some awesome magic. I highly recommend this, but I like, I don't know, I feel like I've been kind of like putting this off because like I didn't want it to end, but finally I was like, all right, no, I just got to see how it ends. So I'm glad that I, I read it. It was wonderful. Uh, the plot in this general trilogy is that our main character, Evie, is kind of distant in line for the throne. However, like one day in the first book, obviously, like all the royals get massacred and she ends up escaping and joins a gladiator troop. So, so throughout the course of the books, there have been various assassination attempts. Evie is obviously like pretty pissed about this and wants to find take charge of things and you know like actively bring the fight to her enemies during these regalia games. So this is also one that I read for the Read the Olympics readathon and like I felt it was very fitting because again this like these regalia games are kind of like a combination of the Olympics and gladiator bouts so that was awesome. But anyway <laughs> things generally don't go as planned and she must muster her uh, magical skills and fight unexpected challenges. So this was fabulous. I think this was of all the all of the books. This is definitely the one that's um, the least focused on the romance. I do think this is much more focused on Evie herself and like finally getting vengeance for this massacre that's occurred. So like I don't know. I did kind of miss some of the romance, but 
I felt like this was a very natural conclusion and it felt like it made sense to focus more on, on Evie in here. It was, again, just really nice to see how all of these events and like plot threads throughout the books finally like culminate and into this like epic finale. Evie continues to be awesome. She's super badass. Um, she wants to do everything she can to be a good queen and obviously protect her people. The side characters I think are not as much of a focus here as they are in other books, but it is again nice to see them return. There's some side characters that I really like. We also get some interesting flashbacks to Evie's life like, growing up and how like her parents are killed and so we kind of follow her as she tries to survive things. <laughs> She's really clever and just like very skilled at playing this long game so I just really just appreciate characters who are good at like scheming and planning ahead and just like using their intelligence to kind of save the day. We certainly get some more fun interesting magical creatures here. I continue to really enjoy the magic system. One of Evie's abilities is to be able to smell magic. She can like smell different types of magic and like when somebody's using it and also just kind of I think can smell like poison and stuff like that so I don't know that's like a really fun side ability that I really like and it's cool to see just like what would different types of magic smell like? <laughs> Again I really like the setting of the, the regalia games. There's also this like really fun card game in here where it's like this trick taking game that's I, kind of like spades and just like that entire scene was awesome and you know like Spades is one of my favorite games so any sort of like fun <laughs> magical equivalent of that is just super cool. Overall I think this is maybe not my favorite book in the series but I still really loved it. I love the series as a whole. I'm super glad that she is going to be writing a, another I think trilogy set in this world following a different character but it was just it was just fantastic. Uh, so the last book I'll talk about is Catfishing on Catnet by Naomi Kritzer. So I buddy read this with Angela from Literature Science Alliance and Rhea from The Book Finch. So this is a YA sci-fi thriller where our main character Steph and her mother are constantly having to move and like basically the only constant thing in Steph's life is this online community called Catnet. And this is a social media site where basically cat, cat pictures are like currency. So the admin of this particular social media site actually is an AI, so that's really fun. Then we have this like threat to Steph and her friends from real life and her online community have to help her out. So we'll just leave it at that. This was fantastic. I figured I would like it, but I didn't know how much I would love it. So there's a whole bunch of diversity here. We have this variety, we have a variety of genders and um, including non-binary individuals, there's different people, or there's people of different sexualities, different backgrounds, and I thought that there was like this really nice discussion of um, pronouns and just generally diversity, and it seems to fit the story very naturally. Like some books I think feel like they're being diverse just for the sake of diversity, but this is not the case. Like it felt very natural here. This was really fast paced, uh, basically like could not put it down and like we had broken it up into like a certain number of chapters per day, but I think like on the last or the second to last day both Angela and I were like we can't stop this, we gotta finish this, so <laughs> I don't know. It like really picks up. It has this really funny tone as well, like there were several moments where I was actually laughing out loud. I think the friendships both in real life and this clouder which is this online friend group um, they're fabulous. I really enjoyed all of these characters. The AI character was great. I think that there was this there's a bit of a discussion about like humanity of AI and rights of AI which of course is like I, don't know, I think I've mentioned this before like this particular plot thread is something that I really like reading about so this was fabulous here. I think there's generally this some sort some discussion of social media and just like you know I think it's on, on one hand it's like you know the good online friends are real friends too and then you know on the, the more negative side of social media I guess it's kind of like how you know living our lives on social media there's we're obviously like putting this information out there and um, some of this can be used for nefarious purposes. Like generally I guess there are some content warnings for like abusive situations but this is a fantastic book. Highly recommend it. I think there's like a short story that inspired this and there's going to be a sequel that comes out I think next year so I'm very excited for that but yeah definitely recommend this. 
So with that, those are my 10 recent reads that I'll be talking about today. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up. For your question of the day, let's go with what was the first series that got you into fantasy? So with that, I hope you're having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.